This video will offer advice on how to colony pick clonal feeder free IPS colonies after reprogramming using the Thermo Fisher Site of Tune IPS2 Send Out Reprogramming Kit. Colony picking has been done on the bench instead of in the cell culture hood for demonstration purposes only. We recommend you do this technique inside the cell culture hood to ensure the sterility of all the cells and plates you're working with. When colony picking free to free colonies, is recommended to start around 15 days after transduction. You can see the dish has a variety of different cell types. Some of them are partially reprogrammed cells in the top left hand corner. You can also see some colonies starting to overgrow. This is demonstrated by the darker area. This is due to the cells being forced to grow upwards instead of carrying on growing flat across the surface of the plate. There are also colonies that are starting to merge into one another. This will make it difficult to colony pick if you're working clonally due to the proximity between the colonies. Here are small examples of partially reprogrammed cells. When selecting the most appropriate colonies to pick, locating colonies that have well-defined and round edges are ideal. It is recommended to avoid picking colonies that have a spiky or undefined edge due to the higher likelihood these colonies differentiating out after colony picking. This is an example, spiky and ill-defined edges. This other colony, even though it has a spikier edge, will be selected for colony picking. Spikiness observed is probably due to the way the colony is currently growing and not the fact that it has a differentiated edge. This image also is a good indication of the difficulties you might see while working with feeder free reprogramming. This is due to the number of colonies you can see growing in such close proximity to one another, making it difficult to work clonally. It is recommended that you look around the entire plate before selecting your colonies. This colony is on the smaller side of colony picking, so I would recommend marking this colony up and observing it a couple of days after this initial observation. Hopefully this colony will grow bigger and have a bit more of a round defined edge before picking. I'll be selecting this colony for colony picking. It has a small little spike and is slightly on the smaller side of what is easily to be picked. But sometimes there isn't a perfect ideal cell. Once you've selected your colony, it's worth marking on the underside of the plate which colonies you've selected. This is due to the fact that if you leave any cell fragments behind, they can regrow and if you can come back and colony pick at a later date, you could accidentally select the same colony you previously picked. While we recommend working on a clonal basis. Now that we've marked the area, I was making colony picking. We recommend using a P20 or P200 pipette when colony picking. P20 is more suitable to those with more experience as you want to reduce the amount of volume you're transferring over to the new plate with the cells. So people with less experience may benefit from starting out by using just the tip. Though this may increase the chances of contamination as your hand is leaning over the area in which you were colony picking from. The first step should be to take the tip and trace around the outside of the colony. You could also use this time to clear away any partially reprogrammed or other colonies that you aren't picking away from the edge of this colony. With the first pass around you do not need to be that accurate. Once you have isolated the colony you can then begin with linear strokes to break down the colony into small fragments. Plate and continue with vertical strokes or continue and utilize horizontal sectioning. Once you do this the fragments may become loose and start floating. This is a good time to collect them with the pipette tip. Once you've collected all the fragments transfer straight into the pre-prepared plate as you can see the colony is much smaller here than it was for the feeder dependent that we picked previously so dissecting this is a little bit more difficult
as you can see from this, if I was to leave this, you can see there's some other colony that I've left behind. This potentially could reattach. If it reattaches, it could form a new colony. That is why it's important to, to mark the area. Once you've collected the colony, you can directly add this to your pre-prepared 12 well plate. If you require a colony that is close to a smaller or not as useful colony, you can, same as the feeder dependent, clear away those, these cells to leave you a fresh colony that you'd like to pick. I'm going to clear away the cells on this left hand side because they are partially reprogrammed and too, and too small to actually colony pick, while the colony to, the main colony in the center is, is a useful colony, so we will select that one. I will also begin by marking the colony area to ensure that I've know when I've picked the colony. Having marked the colony, I will now begin clearing away. Having now marked the area, I've rotated the plate to make it easier for me to clear away cells that I do not require. After clearing away, it's important to change tips so there are no cell fragments from those previously removed colonies that you will be transferring after colony picking. And now after colony selecting, Collecting the cells, you can transfer this into the 12 well plate. Like the feeder dependent previously, it's also worthwhile checking around the edges of the plates to ensure that there are no good colonies to pick there. To prepare the 12 well plates for colony picking into, ensure you have pre-coated your plate with vitronecting at least one hour before colony picking. Make a mixture of E8 plus rock inhibitor where the rock inhibitor is at a final concentration of 10 micromolar per mil and preparing enough media to have 1 mil or well of a 12 well plate. Then aspirate off the vitronectin coating from the plate, or as many colonies as you will be picking on that day. After you finish aspirating, add 1 mil of the E8 plus rock inhibitor mix. Now looking at the colonies that have been selected, you might initially need to move the well around under the microscope to find the colonies as they can be rather small after colony picking. You might also find some additional fragments further around the well as well.
once had to be put back in the incubator at 37 degrees overnight, allowing the colonies to settle 